Hello, everyone. Uh, it's my great pleasure to um, introduce Ike Chun Tan, or as we know him, AC, um, for the Cancer Center Symposium. I've known AC since he got to this campus about nine years ago, and we started collaborating immediately. So he is an associate professor in medical oncology and is now taking over the Cancer Center's bioinformatic enterprise. So he'll be one half of what we call BBSR, which is Bioinformatics and Biostatistics Shared Resource. And he's really got a great vision for this new venture um, that's really going to, I think, hopefully take bioinformatics into the next generation. And, and this is, he's going to bring you on this odyssey with him today. If you know AC, he's not just good for great acronyms. That's one of the things he's known for. He's actually just a, a fantastic person at problem solving. If, if he's got a problem or if you've got a problem, he can figure out a bioinformatics solution for it. And this has really been shown over the years in terms of working out really fantastic pipelines for identifying synthetic lethal interactions in cancer or repurposing drugs for uh, a, a different cancer based on genetic profiles or synthetic lethal profiles. Uh, he's, his group has really been at the forefront of a lot of these methods. So I'm going to look forward to hearing the talk and hearing about his full vision here. All right, thanks. You're going to wear the mic. Thank you very much uh, for the kind introduction, uh, James. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, today I'm going to share with you um, our new... Um, Bioinformatics Enterprise, we call it uh, Oncology Data Science Initiative or Odyssey. Um, um, the disclosure is basically I'm doing bioinformatics uh, um, and there's a very nice uh, editorial published about two years ago in Nature Biotechnology. If you used to read Nature Biotechnology, um, they have a section specifically for computational biology, so people do data analysis, they method development, they publish there. But uh, this editorial basically um, highlighted that uh, they are not going to have that session anymore because computational biology is basically a part of uh, biology. So that from, from now on, um, the computational biology paper or bioinformatics paper is going to publish as a regular paper in Nature Biotechnology. Um, so when we first think about how we are going to um, revamp the bioinformatics for the cancer center, um, the, the first thing that we came to my mind was uh, we, we need to think about um, from the perspective of patients, right? Um, <clears throat> so we all do research. Some of us are more basic than the other. Uh, some of us are very clinical than the other. Um, but I think when a patient's come into our um, clinic or hospital, uh, what they are trying to get is the best uh, treatments, the best care that they can get so that they can um, helping them to go through this journey, right? So that's why it's called Odyssey. Um, so this is an advertisement um, that I took from um, the website. Uh, it's basically a uh, UC Health end, website. A middle and an end. An arc that defines a unique human story. A personal journey with opportunities, challenges, goals, losses, and triumphs. These arcs carry our lives forward and they define each and every individual. That's why the arc is the new symbol of our brand. Because the people of UC Health, you, touch each life somewhere in that arc. You champion the spirit in each other and in the people of you, helping them chart their own unique course. Sorry, I... I'm... Because there's no such thing as a regular person. And there's no such thing as an ordinary life. At UC Health, each person has an arc. And each arc is extraordinary. Just like you. You see health.
cancer, and then hopefully we can um, <coughs> translate those to a clinic to improve health and well-being of our cancer patients. So um, this is basically what we kind of like thought about um, Odyssey. So um, we have the cancer centers, and then the Odyssey is basically a, a much um, bigger enterprise than the, the bioinformatics core. Um, so we want to do some sort of like a discovery that we have to uncover using the big data and innovative computational methods to find out what is the molecular mechanisms in cancer. And hopefully we can develop some new drugs that can target these uh, pathways or alter uh, genetics aberration in patients. And finally, we want to deliver them into uh, patient care. Um, and we, we want to work this with the cancer center member, which is all of you here, or doing some, some sort of like a cancer-related research. Um, I don't think we can do it by ourselves. So uh, basically, uh, for the next few um, 30 or so minutes, I'm going to show you how we are going to do this as a, as a partnership. Um, so this is what we are thinking about, how Odyssey can help to um, um, integrate into these different layers of, uh, from basic research all the way to clinical care. Um, and we have one mission, is basically to develop and uh, advance the application of bioinformatics and computational biology in cancer research. Um, many of you have probably seen this kind of like slides before. This is the um, continuation of um, translating basic research all the way to clinical trials. Uh, to, or implementing into a uh, patient. So um, the, a lot of us are basically uh, sits in this space where we are doing a lot of basic research and um, our clinical colleagues, they are basically doing a lot of these uh, clinical trials and seeing patients, right? And um, there's kind of like what I, we, we, what I call it as a discovery phase and then some sort of like a, you engage patient to do research and then hopefully when the drugs is... Um, a proof you want to implement into a, a, a practice, right? Um, and this is basically how I see uh, biomedical data science can fit into different kind of like um, layers of this um, um, space. So um, we, we call this computational biology or bioinformatics more like a molecular looking at data. Uh, we have some imaging informatics where you hear it uh, about uh, two weeks ago from Fuyong. And then there's some clinical informatics and public health informatics. There's some sort of like a cross between um, the basic research and early phase trials that um, we call it a translational bioinformatics. And then there's a lot of this clinical research informatics where Matt Rioff and his team are doing. Um, so out of this different um, phase of the, the translational research, there's um, a lot of data, right? So for the molecular parts of the basic research, we know that there's a lot of TCGA data, a lot of microarray data. Um, you can even learn um, new generating new hypotheses from mining PubMed. Um, there's a lot of big uh, data sets from perturbation, uh, such as the connectivity map. So these are all available as a data set that we can use to help our research or formulate our research, right? And then when it goes to uh, more like a, a clinical space, the early clinical trials, we have all these different databases. Um, the Compass is our own um, health data compass where we will take this patient data from EHR and then do some research. And then ideally, um, we also have a, a population um, um, core in the cancer center where they are looking at the surveillance um, data sets so that we can understand what is the trend and epidemiology of cancer. So all of this is, is considered data sets. And um, um, the idea is basically, can we use all this data to help us to learn something, right? Um, about maybe 10 years ago, IBM came out with this uh, um, V. Um, these are the four Vs that characterize the big data. So um, the first V is basically the volume. We know that there's a lot of data. Um, variety, so in biomedical data science, obviously we have all kinds of um, different data types. Uh, velocities is the way that the speed of generating this data, right? Um, the genomics core just recently purchased the Novasic. It can generate um, uh, 30, is it 30 human genome in, in one sequencing run. So this is basically how the throughput of uh, sequencing capability that we have over here. And obviously, when you have a lot of big data, public data, um, there's a lot of uncertainty. This is considered as a veracity. So some of this um, <coughs> is going to have some conflict in, um, of information, and then uh, we need to use some tools to kind of like resolve it, right? Um, so the idea is basically you want to take all this data, um, put into some 
computer over here and then try to do some sort of like a data-driven discovery that we can improve health. And this is what we call the fifth V um, value. We want to translate big data into some knowledge. Um, so what is our knowledge over here is our values uh, is trying to make um, every cancer patient individual, right? So I've shown this figure a lot of times. It's basically a melanoma patient. Uh, before treatments, we sequence. They found that there's a BRAF B600E mutations. When they um, deploy a drug that target this uh, B600E patients on drugs, um, kind of like um, um, response very well. Um, however, as the patients continue to get on drugs, the cancer evolve again, acquire a new mutations that kind of like bypass the, the targeted therapy. So <clears throat> this is what we are seeing um, every day. And uh, with the new sequencing technologies, um, this is becoming much easier for us to pinpoint. But the information is still very um, um, enormous because this is just looking at one or two drug, uh, uh, genes that we can link to some drugs. If you imagine that we have 20,000 genes, there's some alterations. How are we going to do that, right? Um, so um, I, I use this uh, figure um, as an example. So assuming that this is our uh, patients and individuals that come into our clinic, uh, we want to help them to um, accompany this person to go through his journey in life, right? Um, and obviously, he will need some compass, right, along the way so that he won't get lost. He needs some map that he can navigate as well as some tools that is going to help him to solve some problems, right? So this is basically how we are going to uh, uh, devise our uh, um, um, bioinformatics enterprise uh, for, for the next few years. So, um, so this is basically kind of like the overall structures. Uh, we thought about uh, we need to have some research, right, and development. Um, there will be some research programs, and we would like to implement some um, novel tools and methods that we can help to not just engage one particular project, but can apply to uh, multiple projects. Uh, we want to collaborate and continue to support the Cancer Center member. So we have a collaboration unit and an analysis unit. So this is basically where you have some pilot data that you want to um, uh, analyze to, to get your grant proposal ready. You can come to us. We're going to help you to do that. Or if you have um, um, funded a grant that you want to put some personnel on your grants that help to do data analysis, come to us. Um, and finally, we also want to teach the um, disciplinar, the knowledge and skill set to uh, our cancer center members so that you can go and start analyzing your data uh, while waiting for uh, us. We, you know that we are very uh, slow in terms of turning data back. We are working on um, improving that. One way is to teach some of you the skill set to do basic data analysis. Um, <clears throat> so currently, this is our uh, team. Um, um, it's myself, um, Jim Costello, um, Jihei, Hyumin, Ken, um, De Xiang is the core director for the biostatistics, and uh, we do some of this uh, research. These are just selected research that we do for um, the cancer research. Um, we're also looking for someone, potentially you, to join our team, that if you have some knowledge or expertise that you can contribute to other cancer center members, come and talk to us, that we can help you to kind of like uh, put you into the right connections. Um, so I, I just give you one example. So this is the kind of like tools that... Uh, a typical research lab is going to develop. So this is my lab. I use it as an example. So over the years, we developed some tools that can help to analyze some data. Um, so one of the tools that we developed is called IMPACT. This is a whole exome sequencing pipeline that we took the FASTQ files, and then we will do the mapping align all the way to uh, making some variance calling and predictions. So one example that we apply the tools is to use it on these uh, melanoma patients. Um, this is a pre-treatment. We took some biopsies. Uh, this is in collaboration with the Robinson Lab of Melanoma. Um, and we have a patient that is responds to BRAF, um, treatments, um, and eventually it become resistant again. So this is a post-treatment. We took another biopsy over here, and then the patients were put on to a BRAF and MAC combinations um, response initially, but again uh, relapsed after two years. So we also collect another biopsy over here. So what we have is a, a pre-treatment, post, and post-combination treatments. Uh, we perform um, exome sequencing, and then we also do um, data analysis using our pipelines. And our idea is basically, can we identify some resistant mechanism that can predict what we can do to deploy in this patient when they become resistant to BRAF mac combo. Um, so this is basically just showing that the number of mutations that we identify um, 
we sequence about 400 times coverage for the exome, so, and our threshold is a little bit uh, low because we want to discover some new um, um, genes that is potentially mutated. And when you overlap all these three uh, variants that is known to be um, deleterious, uh, predicted to be in the exon regions that can have some uh, cause to the cancer, um, the common uh, variance is basically BRAF V600E. There's one NRAS kind of like acquired after the treatments in the post BRAF treatments and the post combination treatments. And then this is basically what we are interested in to see what we can deploy as a, a therapeutic. Um, we check on one particular gene. This is a CDKN2A. In pre-treatments, we do see that there's a good coverage uh, for these genes. Um, after post BRAF treatments, we already lost, right? Potentially suggesting that this could be a, a resistant mechanism for the BRAF MAC combinations. Um, we check on the sequencing profiles. This is when Subo D is still here, uh, using this uh, his method to find the heterogeneity. Um, and we do some validation, and it confirmed that um, the CDKN2A is not detected after post BRAF MAC combination. So the question is, what, what can we do um, as a way to find drug for these patients, right? Um, so we have a way that we can link the um, mutations to drugs. Um, this is basically by building um, our own drug genes target database. Um, and we, over the past year, we kind of like um, make it more user-friendly, so we implement it as a web server. Before that, it's a command line that you have to run it through. So this is a, a web server. If you go to uh, our website, you're going to see impact. Um, the collection of data is coming from these different databases. Uh, we basically first unify the drugs and compounds using the um, unique um, chemical identifiers. We um, try to cross-check and standardize the target genes because some of them are mentioned it in protein name and some genes name. And then we also correlate <coughs> the drug genes interactions into clinical trials to see whether this is um, in clinical trials already approved. Uh, we also add in some kinase fusion genes because we know that these genes, uh, these kinases, are, when they fuse, they, they usually tend to be onco, onco gene drivers. And we put all of this into our database. Currently, it contains about 776 drugs. Um, it has targeting about 1,300 target genes, and there's about 435 um, um, variants, right? So you have a web portal that you can go in and query. So the way that we um, kind of like um, categorize our um, um, predictions is based on these categories. So there's 47 approved drugs in oncology uh, with the target genes and variants. We call this 1A. So for example, um, outfusions with chrysotinib is a mutation, a gene, and a drug. So that is level 1A. Um, if it's like a, a kit mutation in GIS, that will be in um, uh, level 1B because it's a target genes and a drug. It doesn't have a mutation, right? And level 2 is basically um, drugs that is currently in uh, investigational studies. Um, mm -hmm. It's currently open in clinical trials. Uh, we basically use that as a level 2. And then level 3 is basically uh, we went through this uh, clinical pharmacogenomics implementation consortium, CPIC, and then we extract all their drug and genes information. We put it over here as a potentially useful for uh, some patients that have certain um, genetics that could avoid or uh, improve by taking these uh, drugs. So this is how we organize our data. <clears throat> so the interface is very simple. You just put in um, your mutation and your genes, and then you just do query. Um, the advantages of our methods compared to other existing one is uh, the current existing, they only allow one gene at a time. So here you can basically took all your variants calling from um, your whole exome sequencing and then put it over here. It will basically do the mapping. So when you do the mapping, uh, it's basically going to show you some sort of like the different levels with drugs return. Um, and then it's going to tell you some p-values. This is based on a very simple hypergeometric test. And you can have the different levels, right? For each of these drugs, when you click on it, it's going to show you the compound information, what is the genes and variants associated to it, and what, where, where do we get the data source from, and whether they, there's any clinical trials linked to this particular compound. Uh, so for this particular um, query, as you can see, I put in BRAF, V600E, NRAS, and CDKN 2A deletions. Um, we basically get uh, uh, some hits. We know that the patient already uh, resistant to trimethinib and dabrafenib. 
as well as family the, the next one on the list is Power Secret. This is a CDK4 inhibitor. So we basically trying to see that can we use it as a way to uh, test um, the prediction. So um, the way that we do that is we use the patient um, that we identify um, that have this um, characteristic. Uh, we put them into PDS model. Um, this is basically doing the treatments. Um, the black color is the vehicle. The blue is the trimethylamine, the MAC inhibitor. Um, the dark green is the CDK4 inhibitor, power secret, and then the combinations. Uh, for this particular model, it shows some um, addictive effects, and another model is kind of like show a synergistic effect, right? Um, and you basically do all these other things to check on the downstream whether it hits the targets or not, and you also look at the, uh, the proliferation uh, by markers by using um, IHC. So this is a uh, different treatments arm. As you can see that our publicity and traumatic combination basically um, reduce uh, KI67s, uh, shut down the earth pathway. So this is kind of like uh, what we are working on right now to do some in vitro testing to say that whether if we manipulate the cell lines, can we um, make it become resistant um, or make it become sensitive. So this is kind of like the tools that we are um, developing that we think that we can help or assist um, the, the cancer re research discovery. Um, and we know that every day there's about 3,000 papers indexed in PubMed, right? So it's not possible that we can go through them one by one um, to extract this new information. So um, in collaboration with my uh, colleagues in, in Korea University, Professor Jae Woo Kang, uh, we, we basically trying to, um, in the future, use some of these um, text mining approaches that he developed in his lab to, to extract the drug gene variants and then include it into our impact um, website. So one of the tools that we are doing this is uh, we developed this um, kind of like a deep learning system. Uh, so the idea is we <clears throat> train a deep learning uh, system um, try to identify what is the drug genes variant. Um, so this is basically the, the system over here. We have a training set that is manually curated from full text that talk about drug genes and variants. So using this approach, um, the neural network is basically trained and then it's going to have a way to go into the new ab uh, abstracts um, to basically extract all this new information, right? So um, that's a database that is uh, published. So for example, if you key in EGFR, this is basically um, EGFR that is detected by the program. Um, it found these mutations, and then it found these drugs. So this is the tri triplets that we are trying to identify from um, PubMed. Um, so obviously, using computer will be much easier for us to read through. However, they do have false positive that require some post-checking. Um, so this is basically one of the approach that we are thinking about how we can use to increase the drug gene variants from, from the publications. Um, so one thing I want to point out is uh, when we develop this tool, it's not just for fun. Um, sometimes when we publish paper, uh, patients, um, individual patients do pick up and then they do uh, trying to, because like I say, they are, they are cancer patients, they, they need some therapy. Right? Some of these um, patients, when they read the papers or the press release, they basically write to um, um, bioinformaticians and then ask for help to see whether they can use the tools to uh, do the treatments. Obviously, um, we are not MDs, we are not doctors that we can't help them, but I think what we are doing is um, have a way to contribute to impacting the patient's health. Um, and in order to make this all work out well in our cancer center and the larger community, um, I think um, sharing data and standardizing data and methods are, are important. Um, like James um, described earlier, uh, we started with this um, synthetic lethality screens, um, data pipelines, analysis. Uh, we share with other people as well as his protocol. Uh, we got a lot of collaborations. Um, and what we are trying to say over here is um, if there's a lot of data out there that we can reuse or repurpose for your research, right? So um, the way to do that is we need to share the data in a smart way. So I'm going to share with you one uh, clip. This is a clip over here. Um, if I do this right, let me show you. Um, This is an interesting video clip. And show. Uh, bear with me. Data management. Okay. Um, a lot of time is when we read a paper, 
we want to, we found the paper very interesting. We found that the data probably can be used for your research, right? However, the problem is uh, <coughs> um, you are going to probably experience some of this um, conversation um, that I'm going to play right now. Uh, it's Hello. a real-life story. My name is Dr. Judy Benign. I'm an oncologist at NYU School of Medicine. Hello, Dr. Judy Benign. I read your article on cell function. I think that I could use the data for my work on pancreatic cancer. I am not an oncologist. I know, but I think I could use the data for my work on pancreatic cancer. Do you have the data? Everything you need to know is in the article. No. What I need is the data. Will you share your data? I am not sure that will be possible. But your work is in PubMed Central and was funded by NIH. That is true. And it was published in Science which requires that you share your data. I did publish in science. Then I am requesting your data. Can I have a copy of your data? I am not sure where my data is. But surely you saved your data. I did. I saved it on a USB drive. Where is the USB drive? It is in a box. It is in a box at home. I just moved. But can I use your data? There are many boxes. So many boxes. I forgot to label the boxes. Hello again. Thank you for sending me a copy of your data on a USB drive. I received the envelope yesterday. You are welcome, but I will need that back when you are finished. That is my only copy. I did have a question. What is your question? You might find the answer in my article. No. I received the data, but when I opened it up, it was in hexadecimal. Yes, that is right. I cannot read hexadecimal. You asked for my data and I gave it to you. I have done what you asked. But is there a way to read the hexadecimal? You will need the program that created the hexadecimal file. Yes, I will. What is the name of the program? Cytosynth. I do not know this program. It was a very good program. The company that made the program went bankrupt in 2007. Do you have a copy of the program? I do not use this program anymore because the company that made it went bankrupt. <laughs> Maybe you can buy a copy on eBay. I have good news. You again. I talked to my colleague. She knew a person with a copy of the software. Then why do you need me? Everything you need to know about the data is in the article. I opened the data and I could not understand it. If you have the program you will find it is clear. Well, I noticed that you called your data fields SAM. Is that an abbreviation? Yes, it is an abbreviation of my co-author's name. His name is Samuel Lee. We call them SAM. I see. And what is the content of the field called SAM1? Ah yes, SAM1 is the level of CXCR4 expression. And what is the content of the field called SAM2? That is logical if you think about it. What is the content of the field called SAM2? I don't remember. What about SAM3? Is there a guide to the data anywhere? Yes, of course. It is the article that is published in Science. <laughs> the article does not tell me what the field names mean. Is there any record of what these field names mean? Yes. My co-author knows what the content of SAM2 is and SAM3. And SAM4. Can I talk to your co-author? I'm not sure. I would very much like to talk to your co-author. Well, he was a graduate student. He went back to China two years ago. Can I have his contact information? He is in China. His name is Sam Li. I think I cannot use your data. You could check the article to see if what you need is there. Please stop talking now. <laughs> okay, I, I think... Uh... Sometimes we, we do some of these mistakes, right? Um, however, um, as you know that uh, NIH now is very um, encouraging 
the research funded by NIH to share data um, and do metadata analysis. So they came up with this uh, um, um, rules or uh, principles. It's called FAIR, FAIR. Um, so your data or methods have to be easy to findable, um, accessible, um, interoperable, and reusable, right? So the idea is we spend a lot of money doing one small, very focused uh, research, but potentially your data could help other people to do their research. Um, if you're interested, there's this article that you can go and read. Uh, it's published in Scientific Data. <laughs> uh, but uh, we do have a librarian, um, Vladimir. Um, he's a bioinformatician that he will uh, have knowledge to help you to kind of like organize your data if you need help on that. And if you need help to um, deposit your data to some public repository, and you can come and talk to us. We are going to uh, happy to help you that. So um, in, in an ideal world, if all of this data and methods are kind of like available in the cloud, where you similar to where you store all your um, iPhone photo in, in the clouds, right? Um, data, the data have to be somewhat in in a in a standardized format where people can go and reuse it. Um, there will be some sort of like an application um, interface where you can download the data for for use in your local, right? Um, so I'm sure that a lot of you. Um, familiar with this uh, portal, it's called C-Bio Portal. Uh, it's developed by the Memorial Sloan Kettering uh, Cancer Center. So this is kind of like an interface where they upload all the TCGA data. If you're interested in browsing or questioning, querying one or two genes from TCGA, instead of downloading the full data, you can come here and query, right? Um, so the sixth V that I'm going to describe today is uh, visualizing the data. Um, the idea is, if we have a local copy of this um, software um, in-house, that we can basically visualize all our data, right, uh, internally. Um, I'm sure a lot of you heard about Comoco. That is our uh, molecular profiling services. Um, they, about four or five years ago, they launched a targeted panel. Um, they have been sequencing a, a lot of our cancer patients. Um, what you get over here in the public TCGA is um, collected from different um, patients across different studies. Um, most of them are kind of like early stage patients, but the patient that we see over here are many more advanced stages. So uh, we heard about Komoko, we know that there's targeted sequencing, but so far we haven't really have our hands to see the data, right? So today I'm going to show you that actually uh, we can access the data. Um, so the data is basically um, available uh, to all of us now. Uh, because what we are doing is we just download a local copy of C Bio Portal, right? So this is a C Bio Portal that we just download over here. You can see that it has a Komoko that stands for our own patients. Um, this is just a subset of their full data set. Um, um, Dara and, and her team are working uh, together with uh, Odyssey that we are trying to streamline that uh, new patients, when they get sequenced, they will be able to come in and query. So how are we going to do that? Uh, if you select all the patients, um, this is a live demo. Hopefully, it will work. You can basically query, right? So, for example, you're interested in P53, EGFR, KRAS in all the samples. There's about 1,130 patient samples. Um, so, this is basically the, the, the data. Um, this is showing you that every patient that has been sequenced or profiled in Komoko, every color code over here is one of these different diseases. Um, we are basically just tapping in the um, API of C Bioporter, but now the, uh, the, the software is basically available that if you have your own local copy of your genomics data, you want to put into to this um, browser, you can come and talk to us. We are happy to have you to do that. Uh, why, why is this uh, uh, very interesting? Because um, I remember one time uh, Dr. Ban came into my office and said, um, can you tell me what is the core mutations of P53 and EGFR in our lung cancer cohort. So that's basically the result. There's no call uh, occurrence because uh, this is the analysis tool that is applied in uh, uh, C-BioPorter that is looking at our data that shows that there's no correlation, right? So um, these, are, these, these are the things that you can um, already utilize. Um, the, 
interesting about um, um, the C bioporter is you can basically look at the distribution of the mutations across all your samples. You can select a particular subset of samples. You can look at them, and they basically load it to some um, known um, annotations from um, memorial Sloan Kettering. So this is basically saying that p53 is a tumor suppressor for this particular mutation, right? And you can also link to their drug um, um, target uh, websites where a particular gene. A mutation try to correlate with some um, information. So the panel that um, um, the Comoco initially used had contains about um, 40 or so um, cancer genes. So this is basically looking at all the gene distributions. You can look at them individually, right? And then you can basically um, do the same kind of analysis. What we are showing you here is all running through within our university um, network. So if you are outside the network, you need to do VPN to connect to our university network in order to visualize this data. So the data that we are pulling out from Komoko is um, de-identified um, and currently is very basic, but we tend to, intend to kind of like incorporate some other new uh, um, clinical information so we can do this kind of more like a, a much useful analysis rather than looking at the frequency of mutations. So. Um, one, one of the examples that we have is um, you can look at um, our published uh, mutation samples where um, you can look at patient summaries. Um, you can look at the basic clinical data files that you can put in. So all of this information, if you provide it associated with your samples, you can basically browse and query. So for example, we are interested in this particular patient that have multiple samples sequence. So you can basically utilize the um, analytical um, or visualization um, apps of this C portal to visualize it. So this is basically saying that for all these different tumors, it found this kit mutation. Potentially it's a driver mutation for this patient and then there's some um, annotation related to this um, a genes. So this is um, something um, ready and rolling and uh, if you have your data that you're willing to share, uh, um, please come to us. We are happy to help you to put up there. Um, and so this is what we, are, we envision that um, when we go and develop new tools or we implement, download, um, publish new tools, we want to do something like this where the cloud is all the data that is storing somewhere. Uh, we will have our own local um, copy of our own data that you can plug in, that you can utilize some of these tools that is um, available for you to do your analysis, right? Um, the other repository are, for example, from um, TCGA that you don't need a local copy, um, things like that. Um, so I already show you the Comoco um, data. And for the services, the support, um, like I said, we have these two different uh, units, um, the collaboration unit that um, um, we will try to help you to um, um, develop new ideas, new grants, experimental design. Uh, one one um, area of interest is uh, if you have a grant that is recently submitted to NIH, you get a score, but it requires some sort like a, um, data analysis or multi-omics data analysis, uh, come to us. We will probably be able to help you to uh, get a better analysis to put into your uh, resubmissions that hopefully will get funded. Um, and this is basically what we are trying to do to kind of like help each other out to, to get more uh, grant fundings and uh, more interesting research. Um, we are also um, willing to be your um, gatekeeper for data integrity. So if you run through a data analysis pipeline, uh, you're not sure whether your analysis is correct or not, you can come to us. We are happy to do like a, a checking. Um, and the other thing is, um, we are thinking about opening a clinic hour. So uh, we are going to have a dedicated um, bioinformatician sitting in one of the offices uh, somewhere in this campus. Uh, we are going to have a, a, a location time slots that you can book it online and then come to us. Uh, so for this type of service, it's more like a, a short and simple uh, quick answer. For example, how do I go and download TCGA data? We can do that for you on the spot. But if you come in to say that I have these uh, five samples that I require some uh, sequence alignment, uh, we won't be able to do it in 15 minutes. So we are going to send it to our analysis team that's going to generate the data, run through the pipelines, and then give you um, the result. So um, this is why we envision that the clinic hours will be able to help you to navigate um, different data sets um, 
potentially help you to link up with different um, collaborators in the cancer center. Um, if we, we plan to launch this in two days time, that is Thursday, March the 1st. <laughs> so uh, the idea is uh, if you think that we are, we are doing a good job, uh, you can go and tell other non-cancer center member uh, that can come to us. Uh, one of the success stories that I'm going to share with you is uh, Jihei. As you know, she is a uh, bioinformaticians working in the medical oncology. So she started a collaboration with York and Momita uh, for the past um, uh, three, four months. And then they basically um, work out a, a data analysis plan, experimental design. And um, when they put in a grant for fundings, uh, all three of those are uh, kind of like a co-PI on the grants, and she basically got the V Foundation translation grant for 2017. So this is what we envision that um, we kind of like work as a team. Uh, we provide the computational um, quantitative ex um, experience or expertise to your grant that hopefully will get this um, type of multi-PI grant. Um, and finally, this is what we envision that we will probably conduct some short um, seminars or some sort of like a class. Uh, potentially some ideas will be like coding sessions, um, like how to load the data into R, run some simple per program or Python, um, navigate or access some web portals like CBI portals, how to access CBI portal with our own data um, or some running GSEA. And if you are interested in learning more of these quantitative sciences, maybe you want to sign up for some of the certificate. For example, one of them is the Biomedical Data Science Graduate Certificate. Um, it is a 15 credits um, um, program for graduate students. It's um, kind of like free. You just um, register, take all the courses. You will get a certificate at the end of your uh, study. Uh, we, we are also happy to participate in mentoring um, junior faculties. If you are submitting a K grant, um, require some sort of like a committee of bioinformatics, uh, can, you can come and talk to us. Um, we also do a lot of this um, outreach. So we have a bi-weekly um, bioinformatics journal club every Friday. So this Friday, um, 1 to 2 p.m. is our journal club in RC1 South 8th floor conference room. Uh, we also um, planning to uh, work with the biostatistics call to invite some um, uh, quantitative um, or data science uh, speakers from outside um, to come here and deliver some, some of this, their latest research. Uh, we also co-organizing the mini symposium of informatics. This year will be April 18, 2018. And then we're also thinking about um, maybe planning a cancer-focused um, data science symposium later this year. Um, so I told you kind of like our plan. And um, the idea is uh, we, we envision that Odyssey will be kind of like a, a hub that you can come to us with your data, with your questions, and then we will basically try to utilize or develop some innovative and rigorous methods um, to tap into this big data to help you to find some interesting result or hypothesis, right? Uh, we see ourselves as a, a connector that we can link between basic science to clinical or vice versa. Um, and we also want to be a, a way that we can teach the next generation of uh, scientists. Um, we, we want to do it in a collaboration uh, way, uh, a team science approach. Um, if you are interested in joining us as part of our member, come and talk to us. Um, as I say, most of the work is uh, done by these people and my wonderful collaborators. Um, and especially uh, with the new um, cancer center uh, leaderships, they, they see that Tapping into um, big data is one of the important areas, so they um, invest some resources into um, the new um, Odyssey. Um, and finally, um, I invite you to join our Odyssey to fight cancer, right? So um, I'm happy to take any questions. Yes. <laughs> uh, right now, there's about 15 different cancer types that the Komoko is give, um, uh, sharing with us. Um, I'm, I'm talking with Dara to see whether we can get more access to their um, samples, other samples that you can basically um, query. Um, they are using a targeted panel for now.
No questions? Okay, thank you.